Earth is something inherently captivating. Whenever I get the chance to watch the sky on a mild summer night full of stars, I take a chair, sit down and just look far into the deep and mysterious vastness of our galaxy. When people talk about space, words like fascinating, incredible, awe-inspiring, but also mysterious and even scary come up. And for a nerd like me who not only likes space but also video games, it was even cooler to find one that combines these two and managed to deliver these impressions. And that game was Mass Effect. While Mass Effect 2 was the game that introduced me to the series and was awesome enough to keep me hooked, I was sold to this universe only after I finally played the first one. Last time I talked about the world building in Mass Effect and how it's delivered not only through codex, but through actual in-game characters. Once again, spoiler warning. You ready? Okay, let's go. This time I want to talk about the two biggest reveals in not only the game, but probably the whole trilogy, and how they help making this universe even bigger. The conversations with Vigil and Sovereign. We are, still, hunting Saren, which leads us to Vermeer. Saren is breeding a Krogan army, we have an important argument with Rex, who, just like Caden or Ashley, could possibly not survive this mission, and we encounter another Prothean beacon Saren possesses. We also discover that he's studying the effects of indoctrination on living prisoners. It's never really explained how, though. One could assume that just the sheer presence of Reapers could influence you. Now this is important because it shows us that he is indeed worried. Saren thinks he works for Sovereign because of his logic and own will. But this facility clearly shows and foreshadows that he has his doubts. Is this ancient ship really influencing his decisions? No, it can't be. Right? Saren is an absolute badass, a spectre, a top agent. Smart, efficient, experienced, influential and he's been around and met a lot of people. This highlights how dangerous Sovereign is. Besides having the biggest gun in town, he isn't just using brute force to advance his goals. He made one of the council's best agents his puppet to do the work. Because indoctrination isn't just mind, mind control. control. The Reapers are patient, devious, calculating. And indoctrination is a slow, subtle process. So yeah, the Reapers are pretty much supposed to be the Cthulhu sort of enemy. Now Mass Effect of course isn't cosmic horror. Sovereign spectacularly blowing up in the end of this very game proves that. Fuck! But Mass Effect definitely took some inspiration from it. The Reapers here are the Great Old Ones, basically. Dormant, ancient monstrosities with power, motives and knowledge we can't understand. They influence the minds of those around them and when they wake up, we're screwed. Yes, Sovereign actually considers us puny organics important enough to have a conversation, but this gives us a first-hand impression of the Reapers, how little they care about us and how superior they seem to be. This is the first big reveal of the Reapers, and having one of them showing up instead of just some cultist or puppet like Saren is direct proof of the imminent and real threat. They are coming. Also, this is barely a conversation. Okay, for one, because once again Shepard acts like a naive child. Our numbers will darken the sky of every world. You're not even alive! But also, because throughout this whole dialogue, Sovereign treats us like ants without even revealing a bit of his plan. If anything, he only tells us that we suck and are only as advanced as we are because of them. The mass relays, the things that allow fast travel but throughout the whole galaxy, yeah, the Reapers made them. They raised us the way they wanted, so they could predict and kill us like animals for slaughter. Just like they did with the Protheans and thousands upon thousands of civilizations before. Man, that went dark. The delivery of Sovereign's lines is also really important here. Cold, robotic, emotionless, powerful. It's obvious that Sovereign isn't just some rampant but polite AI who just thinks that organics actually harm themselves or something. Oh, shut up! He clearly sees us as some lower form of life. And he lets us know. But he keeps himself distanced. He isn't getting personal or emotional in any way. And why should he? He's not trying to convince anyone here. He doesn't care what we think. We are just one more civilization to harvest. This is not a discussion. This is Sovereign making clear that this cycle is about to end like all the others before. Um, that's why the final fight against Sovereign bugs me a little. I think the Serum boss fight was already a good final battle. While the conversation was pretty... Uh, the fact that you could technically avoid it makes it even better for me since it felt more like an RPG where you don't progress just with guns, but dialogue. 
letting him comically shout, I am sovereign. And fighting against Shepard instead of just jumping to the panel and let his bros in, makes him look like a short sighted raging dummy instead of an ancient, patient, highly intellectual monster. There are rumors that the actual reasoning behind the Reapers was that they wanted to save the universe from dark matter or something. And while this is better than what we got, I still would have preferred them to be this alien, unknowable, ungodly powerful threat. Who cares why they do this? It is already thrilling enough that they are this superior and that we have to find a way maybe not even to destroy, but at least stop our extinction. We cannot win this with guns and numbers. What we need is knowledge. Knowledge how to survive this. Knowledge like we get from Vigil. We follow Saren to Ilos, an old Prothean world where we find the conduit, the artifact Saren searched for this whole game. We also get to see the first real image of Protheans. Yeah, yeah. But they are the Inusanon, the cycle before the Prothean, who actually look like the collectors. Whatever, I don't care about these retcons. This looks far more alien instead of just another human shaped bipedal bunch. I wanna take a second and talk about the Prothean distress call before we get to Vigil. We get to experience a little bit of the terror that the Protheans ran through, and it also establishes that Shepard can understand Prothean. However, sadly, this leads to nowhere. The game is already over, and the last time this could have been used for the story is for talking with Witcher later. However, Witcher speaks in a language that we and our companions can understand, so this is basically pointless here. I understand why. Our companions can take part in the conversation and not just stand around while Shepard asks some random questions to some gibberish. My only guess is that the distress call was supposed to build up Shepard's ability to understand Protheans for the later games. That would have not only made our protagonist more unique, but also helped to push the Reaper plot forward in the later games. Which never happened, but whatever. We keep chasing Saren to the conduit when something seemingly wants to lead us somewhere. Okay, this is a bit contraproductive. Yes, we need knowledge about the Reapers, the Citadel and the Conduit, but this is probably the worst time that Saren is about to open the door to our extinction while we are talking. The mission is even called a race against time. Anyway, let's just assume it took Saren really long to take out CSEC. What now follows is the most important reveal in the trilogy and one of my favorite moments. Vigil is a Prothean AI that has been waiting in the facility for the last 50,000 years. Just like many species before, the Protheans have also been attacked and extinguished by the Reapers, completely out of nowhere. And that is because the Citadel is actually a gigantic trap. A mass relay, linked to dark space, where the Reapers wait until the time comes again. From there, they take control over the mass relay network, leaving every star system on its own and eliminating one after another, without their victims having any chance of getting help from elsewhere. But the Protheans went lucky. Sort of. Ilos was a secret facility and if there were any records, they got destroyed during the initial attack on the Citadel. This left them isolated, but also alive. They went into cryostasis to wait till their enemy retreated. Years turned into decades, and decades into centuries. And when the Reaper finally went back to dark space, the Prothean race was no more. Desperately, the last few survivors sent their messages through the remaining beacons, hoping to find anyone left. Facing the fact that their species was lost, the last few scientists used their remaining years of their life to give the upcoming cycle at least a chance. I have to mention the conversation soundtrack you hear in the background. The track almost itself tells a story about a long forgotten sorrow, tragedy, but also about majesty, pride and hope for a better future. At the beginning of this video I talked about how Mass Effect evokes the same emotion space does for me. That was it. This was the moment where the Mass Effect universe exploded and became so much bigger, so much more. We are only one piece in an ancient game of galactic scale. And both the dialogues, with Sovereign and Vigil, manage to do this. This is how a plot twist is done. When you sit in your chair, awestruck, and just letting think what you just discovered. How it changed the perspective of anything you learned before. And Vigil again really undermines its overall image of the Reapers. Now one could argue that both of these conversations are direct opposite of show don't tell and pure exposition. And yeah, it's true. But it's a good thing actually. Games can tell the stories different from movies, shows or comic books. Imagine instead of having a dialogue with Sovereign or Vigil, we'd cut to a cutscene where we would actually get to see what we're being told. How the Reapers jump from dark space and cause destruction and terror to civilization. That sounds cool. But suddenly we would have seen what the Protheans really looked like and how they fought the Reapers. I think this would have been world building where it isn't needed. 
It would have shown too much and stripped the Reapers and Protheans of a sense of mystery. Sometimes less is more. Sometimes imagination is the best visual effect. Also, if anything, with a cutscene, narrated or not, there wouldn't be a dialogue, just Sovereign and Rigil explaining and answering things Shepard never asked for, and if he did, it would have been through auto-dialogue, in a predetermined order. Let the Prothean Reaper story be history, and mystery, at least for this game. However, the place where we at least meet Sovereign could have been more spectacular. Instead of a boring grey steel room, why not a darker room, where only a few intact lights, monitors, and a red beacon would let up some important spots. Also, instead of putting a projection of Sovereign in front of us, don't show anything of him, and just let his deep, robotic voice break the silence of the room before the music starts. This would have made him seem more ominous and foreboding. I know stuff like this is easier said than done, but hey, I'm just trying to add some advice to my rambling. Mass Effect is a game that always leaves me wondering, what could have been? I don't think that the sequels are bad games or unplayable. No, not at all. They are fun games and I can understand why people like them so much. I'm not saying Mass Effect 1 has some god tier flawless writing. These helmet camps would have been really useful later. In fact, when it comes to character interactions, the sequels do a better job. However, why not both? Why does the world building and main story have to take a dive for these wonderful characters? Also, writing is more than just world building or character dialogue. It's also about tone and themes. And Mass Effect 1 already established that. Playing Mass Effect 2 right after the first one always feels strange to me. Strange because while I know some of these characters and stories from the first game, and especially the loyalty missions are a huge step up, I can't help but feel like I'm in a different universe than the one I was introduced before. We don't know what exactly happened behind the scenes at Bioware and EA, and I don't want to dive more into this. What I know however is that you can see the consequences and change in priorities in the final product. Not only retcons, more action, the main storyline shift in focus, or less RPG elements, but also tone. The tone of Mass Effect just changed. How this game, how this universe feels. I can't change what has been done, but maybe my voice is heard by someone for future projects like this. And of course, feel free to share your opinion too. I love bombastic action and good gameplay as much as the next guy, but for the future I'd like to see another sci-fi game like Mass Effect. Or rather, a game that combines the best from the trilogy, where action and style take a step back to make stage for the universe, its stories, rules, characters, and hopefully endless potential. See you guys next video, power out.